Please, please, Barry. Barry's gonna be in the video, right? Jamie Lee from Bird Tricks here and today's topic is going to be a tough one and I know that I'm going to be saying as usual kind of feels like uh, things that you guys don't necessarily want to hear so let's get to it a lot of people when they're buying new baby birds from either breeders or pet shops or wherever you're getting your baby bird I get this email quite a bit so I wanted to address it in a video um, the question that I get is basically somebody put a deposit down on a bird or they've just been going in and visiting their baby bird. They're so excited and right before they go to take it home, the pet shop or the breeder lets them know that they will need to clip the bird in order to give it to them. Now, usually these deposits that people have put down are non-refundable and that's kind of how these pet shops and breeders get people to buy these clipped babies. Even though maybe even prior they said that they wouldn't clip them, they kind of do it under the guise of, yeah, we didn't clip them while they were here, but before they go to you, we have to. A lot of the reasons that breeders and pet shops will say that they have to clip the bird is for the bird's own safety, which is complete ball of garbage. Um, and most of this is usually because they'll say, oh, the bird's flying all around and running into things and hitting walls and getting windows and it could break its neck and it could really get hurt. Or you could train it uh, so that it knows what a window is, so that it knows its abilities and capabilities and gets skills to be able to turn and not hit the wall. However, a lot of pet shops and breeders do not have the time to dedicate to do that with each and every bird. They wanna just kind of get them out the door to the next person. That's also why they usually wean them onto seeds. It goes a lot faster, birds take to it a lot easier, and it's less work for them, and they can get the bird out at a younger age. So they can just kind of move the birds through the system. Um, what I will say <laughs> is one, if you can avoid putting a deposit down on a bird, please do it. Uh, ahead of time, do your research and ask the breeder or pet shop and make sure that they will not clip your bird. Why is that important? Because birds learn to fly at a specific age. Just as humans learn to walk when we're really, really young, that's when we have the instinct to learn to walk. So when we fall down or we hit our head or we bump into a wall or we hurt our foot and we end up on our tush over and over and over again, we get back up. And that's because we were meant to learn to walk at that time. So even though we get hurt, we get back up again. It's just in our nature. We know that that's just part of the learning process. The same goes for birds. When they're clipped as fledglings, which is usually the age referred to um, when they are learning to fly, when they're clipped at that point, they become greatly discouraged because every time they try to use their wings, instinctively everything's saying, use your wings, you can do it, get back up again try 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 and the more they try the more they do get hurt because when they're clipped they just plummet when they're clipped they don't have the ability to get the skills they need to be able to maneuver properly and so it leads to injury and if every time you tried something you got hurt 100% of the time you would become so discouraged that you would stop trying and that's what happens psychologically with birds they stop trying because they realize that flight equals pain and they develop phobias for flying, especially the medium to large birds. I will say I've seen much better turnaround in the little guys. Um, whenever they've come clipped, they tend to just recoup a lot faster, get their skills down a lot faster. A smaller space goes a longer way for these little guys. Still no excuse to do it. Ideally, we never want a bird to know what it means for their wings not to work. They should work. It would really mess you up if you instinctively knew that you were supposed to try to walk and you were supposed to do that and somebody just chopped you so you couldn't um, and everything equaled pain when you did try. So it really works against nature to do that psychologically so please do your research find a breeder who believes in keeping birds fully flighted sign the documents that you need to sign a lot of breeders who are shipping birds do not want to be responsible for somebody being an idiot opening 
the carrier and the bird flying away. They don't want to have to replace that thousand dollar bird. Um, so if you need to sign something, make sure that everything's secure. Airlines especially are really good about making sure that carriers are zip tied and locked um, so that animals can't get out like that. Uh, however, just signing the things that you need to sign to ensure that your bird is not going to be clipped by its breeder or source that you're getting it from is really, really important. I have literally instructed free flight students to walk away from birds whom the breeders just decide, no, we're going to clip it. Uh, no matter what you say, we're going to clip it. I've convinced people to walk away and find a new bird, but most of the time people are already emotionally invested and can't walk away. I will say tons of our free flight stories are birds that were previously clipped. So yes, they can come back from it, but some don't. And that's just the harsh reality. I've had so many people who want to enroll in the flight course and their bird does not want to fly and the bird needs to want it. You want to be doing something that's enriching the bird's life, not causing it pain and stress. Um, and so it's not just something that the human has to want, it's something that the bird has to be wanting as well. And if we don't see that from the bird or we see a lack and we see like muscle atrophy where the muscles just never developed and it's painful for the bird to actually lift its wings or fly, we can't get into a flight training course because it's not going to associate your relationship positively anymore, which is the whole idea of it. Hey guys, welcome to Bird Chicks. Today we are flying our birds. Mm, I think I got beeps. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh, Lily just came. Beep, Lily. Got Lily. Yeah, because over there chilling. <laughs> yeah, because over there just chilling on the car. <laughs> and it makes them happy. Tell you we're coming. <laughs> One of the personal stories I want to share is of a free flight student who came to us. She got her um, macaw actually fully flighted and then had her subtly clipped because she didn't realize it was normal for a macaw to be klutzy when they're babies. So when they're babies they're just a little bit clumsy just like humans are. You know they drop stuff, they can't quite hold stuff, they're working on their coordination and their balance. Um, they're brand new to the planet you guys <laughs> so not everything is going to come out of the woodwork just totally perfect. So they are klutzy, they're clumsy, all those things. The first 
attempts at flying, they're probably not going to nail it. They're going to, you know, crash into something, hit something. They don't have full control. Um, this is totally normal. What's really important for us as humans to realize is that it's normal and then to help them work on it and help that help teach them the skills so that you know they don't do those crashes and they aren't so clumsy and they get to work on that ability and strengthening it. Um, this flight student that came to us didn't realize that it was so normal for a baby macaw to be klutzy and clumsy and she was actually talked into just clipping it just enough. Well, it could still fly, it could still run into things, but now it was even a little bit more out of control because of the clipping. And so she was actually fearful that it was gonna get injured at this point, and so she was talked into a full wing clip. And that's what she ended up doing, and came to us wanting to do the free flight course. We recommended imping. She went to, so that she could enroll immediately based off of having a clipped bird. She went to a vet that did it improperly. They all just immediately fell out within three days of getting the procedure. She flew up to Montana to try to get imping redone and fixed by our vet, Dr. Card who was going to redo it for her and they just couldn't. Um, everything from the previous one was just still stuck enough that there was nothing they could do to redo it. It was, it was too, it was just too much. Um, so unfortunately it was a lot of money, a lot of time wasted, all because she didn't understand what a baby bird and what a fledging bird looks like. So I do want to say that yes, a fledging bird could hurt itself. It could run into the wall and break its neck um, if it's going fast enough. It can get injured. Just as a child can get injured from the process of learning to walk. They can tumble down the stairs. They can, like there's so many things. That's why we because humans have invented baby gates and avoidance techniques of things that we can um, do and set up for our kids so that they're learning in a safe environment. And that's the same thing that needs to translate over to our birds. We need to teach them in a safe, positive environment where they are able to learn. So some of the things that you can do to do this is by just blocking off windows or problematic areas. Mirrors, especially when a bird has no idea and maybe you have a full wall or doors that are complete mirrors, that is going to be very confusing for a bird who's never seen it before. Grew up in a pet shop or a breeding facility and hasn't seen the insides of a, of a real home and what it looks like and there might be some things where it looks like it could fit and it just can't. Um, so making sure you set up your bird for success. If you know that it likes a specific area, trying to make sure that area is padded or maybe you put a foraging tree there so it has a better chance of figuring out its landings. I know for me when Blue Blueberry came home and uh, once her feathers came in and she was flying all around, I had big foraging trees everywhere. And once she developed her skills quite a bit, I started moving those foraging trees around the house. And I remember I had one in the corner of my dining room and she was expecting it to be there, flew over there, buzzed around and kind of helicoptered like, where's my tree? I usually land over here, but I had moved it. And I had done that intentionally to build her skills so that I knew she was always paying attention while in flight, not just expecting things to be there and she could just get it blindfolded. I wanted her to always be aware of her surroundings and be able to turn or descend or ascend if she ever needed to so that she's really aware um, and paying attention. So that was that's just something that birds need to learn in order to do well in their environment because there might be a human coming through that doorway that they need to be ready for. Um, so just helping them develop their skills in a safe way is really paramount to a fledgling. So one of the things I do want to point out, especially those of you that do have clipped birds, I don't want you to be so discouraged in attempting anything. You know, you can definitely still work within a clipped bird's means. Um, we, again, like I said, we have a lot of free flight student stories that the birds were previously clipped, maybe even for years um, of like a portion of their lives, but they overcame and were able to become free flying birds. I just want to say that it takes a specific bird personality and a specific human personality to really achieve that. There's a lot that do not and become very discouraged from not being able to fly that they never uh, overcome the fear and try to attempt it. So 
keep in mind, although there are happy endings where birds, yes, learn to fly after being clipped and learn to fly fairly successfully, um, there's also a lot that do not. And there's a huge difference when you watch a bird who has been previously clipped learn to fly and a bird who has never experienced being clipped fly. There is a difference in confidence level for life and it's really, really important and it's magical and I really don't believe that any bird should experience their wings not working. Especially if it's created by humans, you know, so. So I just wanna say that the main reason for this video is to get across the message of just being willing to walk away from a breeder or pet shop that believes in clipping baby birds. Um, please have the strength, have the courage uh, to set yourself up for success ahead of time and set that bird up and avoid the mistake. Do your research. There are breeders, there are pet shops out there that believe in keeping birds fully flighted, that know the damages that can be done from not doing that. Um, and that care about the long-term success versus just getting birds out the door. They care about their reputation. They care about people spreading the word about them um, and recommending them to other bird owners. So please keep that in mind and be willing to walk away so that we can make a difference in how these old thinkers are thinking. Just that the fact that they think it's okay to clip baby birds is not okay. And it is something that I would love to see changed across the board where everybody understands that it's not okay and starts changing the way they do things. A little side note on something called imping. Now I have a video on my channel about a blue and gold macaw who's much older, over 20 years old, getting imping done because he breaks off his feathers and just never allows them to grow back from when he was previously clipped. He keeps them at that clipped state, but they look really haggard. So we had him imped. We had him imped by a professional, a vet that's very used to doing this procedure. Sunny, in our case, was one that had to be put under it took about an hour and a half to two hours for him. He had about eight feathers on either side of his wings um, to get imped. Now, the really important thing is that you go to somebody who has experience imping. Imping is most uh, known for happening with birds of prey in um basically in an effort to rehabilitate them quickly and get them back outside and released into the wild. So a lot of the times if two birds of prey get in a fight and wings are broken, or not wings are broken, but feathers are broken, they can't be re-released right away because they cannot fly. So that's when imping is done. They are given new feathers basically, and then they are re-released much earlier than if they had to remain in captivity until a natural molt happened and new feathers came in. So sometimes we don't have the time to wait, especially with wild birds, where we don't want them to become accustomed from getting free meals and freebies from humans. We want them to carry on living a wild life and providing for themselves. So this has been done with parrots. I used an amazing vet that I highly recommend named Dr. Card, and she is in Missoula, Montana. She did a fantastic job. I'm sure prices are going to change and prices will be different based on your bird, the feathers, how many feathers, all of that stuff, if you have to put them under for it or what have you. But having eight feathers done on either wing was literally less than $500 from Dr. Card. Like I thought that that was amazing. I thought we were looking at thousands of dollars to be honest. I had written a few friends and asked them if they had ever looked into imping and the quotes they got were in the thousands so they never did it for certain birds in their care. Um, I will say I had a client who went to do it with a blue and gold in California. The vet should have said she didn't know how to do it. She tried to achieve it with PVC, um, which is very hard and sturdy. It doesn't flex or bend. And what happened was all the imped feathers just fell out within days of getting this procedure. And the procedure was around $1,500 for about four to five feathers on each side. So a lot less than Sunny had done and like two to three times the price. So keep in mind, please get recommendations, personal recommendations. Go out there and find somebody who's done it. Ask on the forums, ask on the groups and say that you need somebody who knows what they're doing. Ideally, when they get imping done, they should be using parts of the feather only. So what this means, and you should definitely check out this video, Sunny, I'll leave a link in the description just so you guys know what I'm talking about. 
because it's something that's harder to explain than it is to just see visually and understand what's happening. But basically what Dr. Carr does, did was she used the hollow part of the feather. She actually cut the top part, used that to connect the feather that's already in the bird. So they clip it to a nice amount and then they line up the other one, clip that one so that it lines up as one complete feather and they connect them by using just even more parts of the feather. So it's a really amazing process, but the main thing that you have to understand about imping is that you need to use something that will flex and bend so that when they're in flight, it just acts very natural and the feather moves with the entire body. If it's rigid and it can't move or flex there, it will just fall out or break off. And that's even more dangerous than how you started. So keep in mind, if you do have a clipped bird who you're, you're looking at wanting to fix right away and do imping, maybe because you're in the fledging stage, it's something that's really, really delicate. You have to get somebody who knows what they're doing to do it properly. Otherwise, you've wasted time, energy, money, and risked your bird most likely going under anesthesia for a process that's not going to be successful. So just be really, really mindful with that. I had no idea until we actually attempted it. So just wanted to pass that information on since it's a little pertinent to wing clipping and what you can do to kind of fix it, although not in every single case. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks Blueberry for hanging out. Are you sleeping? Am I boring you? I think, I think she's been sleeping this whole time. At least she stuck around. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Please leave in the comments any stories that you have, whether your bird came to you clipped or fully flighted and the difference that it made for you. I would love to hear your stories. So thanks again for watching.